All over the world There's a mighty revelation Of the glory of the Lord As the waters cover the sea All over the world The Spirit is moving All over the world As the prophet said it would be All over the world There's a mighty revelation Of the glory of the Lord As the waters cover the sea All over the world The Spirit is moving All over the world As the prophet said it would be All over the world There's a mighty revelation Of the glory
Jesus. Amen.
praise. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I love you, Lord. For your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wait till I live.
even during our trials and tribulations. You wonder what happened to me, I was in the wrong race. <laughs> I uh, was uh, up with Ben and Ben was going to be showing some of our horses with us this year. And because he's got long legs and he's fit and he runs marathons, we decided that we would volunteer him to take our horses over the jumps. And you have them on a lead rope and you go over the jumps. And uh, I just thought I would show him what to do. Showed off a little bit. Instead of showing him how to get over the jumps, I showed him how to take a fall. So I got over one clear and the horse was like an angel over there and over another one, my goodness. And we were doing great timings. Got over the third one and did fantastic. But by the time I got to the fourth one, I went out and pulled all the muscles in my legs. But I'm fine. God is good. And uh, Ben knows what to do now. I just thought I'd let you know. Praise God. Hallelujah. What a wonderful day. This morning when I woke up, I, I didn't know if I was going to make it. I said to my yes, I don't think I'm going to make it today. And uh, I was disappointed because uh, we're having a baptismal service right after church. Bishop McKenzie, Billy McKenzie here, flew all the way from Delaware. And uh, I see Mark has come too. Uh, to see their grandchildren be baptized today. What an honor it is. So Savannah's being baptized. Mark Williams is being baptized. Johnny is being baptized. Cade and Liam are being baptized. My, our grandchildren, Donnie's and Patsy's and Maggie's and I are get, being baptized. And uh, also uh, LT, he's here with us. And uh, there's one more. Emily. 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 Where are you, Emily? Wave to me. Where are you, Emily? So I can just see you. She's not, she not here. She's not here? Oh, it's okay. As long as she's here in time to get <laughs> baptized. So we're going to have a few people being baptized today. And I didn't want to miss this for, for nothing. To see, you know, this is Mother's Day. It's a day for us to honor our mothers and and we're going to do that this morning. We're going to honor the mothers. And in Proverbs, 3, 30, Proverbs 31, verse 28, in the NIV, it says these words of mothers. Her children arise and call her blessed. Her children arise and call her blessed. Her husband also, that means me, Maggie, not only your children, but your husband will call you blessed and give you praises. And I know for me and for my family, I know that as a mother, Maggie's brought our children up really well. And we can give her praises and, and honor her for her service. Not only her, but all the mothers that are here today, the grandmothers. Some of us are in difficult times. We, our mothers are not with us anymore. And we wish that they were with us so that we could say to them and share with them how blessed we are to to have them and all that they've done in our lives. And many of you here today, you can think of how your mother's love, it's a different, it's a unique love, a mother's love. It's even different from a father's love. And I'm just thankful for all the mothers that are here today, all the grandmothers that are here today. And we want as a church to give you honor, to give you thanks and to praise you for the wonderful job that you've done in your family's life. You can see that by the children that are going to be baptized today. I think there's close to 10 people going to be baptized. And uh, I think that's a great thing. There could be children running in the street and doing all kinds of things, but your children are in the house of the Lord. And you've trained them up in the way that they'll go. And when they get old, they'll not depart from it. Hallelujah. Ups and downs, yes. Ins and outs, yes. But that word will stick by them. And that's what we have to do as parents, is to train our children up in the way that they'll go. And when they're old, they'll not depart from it. Uh, Bishop McKenzie is going to come and, and share a word with us in just a minute. And uh, I would like to take an opportunity just to, to let you know that uh, we've got a gift for the mothers. I don't know if you've all got them yet. Yeah. It's in here, a little inscription. 
It's not there, that's my mask. <laughs> I thought I had it in my pocket, maybe I don't. And inside there's faith of a mustard seed as well. If we have faith as a mustard seed, that will remember you. And the blessing of the Lord is upon you. Amen. You'll have this little gift, but also, I thought I would have liked to got you all roses today. But sometimes a rose will just last a day or two, or maybe by the time you get home, it's all wilted. So what I decided to do, I would like to make you all breakfast, all you mothers, just get up in the morning, and you're there, and here I am in your kitchen, and cooking you a nice breakfast. So then I thought that might be difficult. And I, Sammy doesn't like me in his kitchen, so I decided what I'll do, every one of you will be given, I feel like Oprah Winfrey today, every one of you is going to receive a dozen eggs and you can make your own omelet in the morning. And think of me, and the eggs are at the back. I think everybody's been given their gift, Melissa, is that right? Uh, I know it's Nancy, I thought it was Melissa. Hi, Nancy. Everybody's been given their own gift. Have you, all the mothers received their gift yet? Yes? Yeah. All right, praise God. And uh, maybe get one for Jeff as well, because he's here supporting the mothers. And uh, as you leave at the back there, take, there's a dozen eggs for every one of you. And uh, take them with my blessing and uh, make yourself an omelet. And if you get stuck, give us a call and we'll fix you up, okay? But mothers, listen, we love you. And just before we uh, take up the offering this morning, the offering is the envelopes in the back of the chair. Mary, give me an envelope. If you feel led to give your tithes and offerings and you've all been so faithful, just fill them out there with your name and the amount, etc., where it's to go to, and you drop it in that basket at the end when, when you leave, all right? So bless you for your giving uh, as unto the Lord, and we appreciate all your faithfulness and what you've done to keep this, this place going. We would never have made it without you, so we thank you for that. So I'm just going to pray over the offering and then just you give it as you leave this morning. Father, so grateful for the faithful brothers and sisters this morning that have given so faithfully of their tithes and have brought their tithes and their offerings into the storehouse. So there will be meat in the house and eggs in the house so that we can share with our brothers and sisters. Lord, we're grateful for everyone that gives. And I pray for a hundredfold return in your precious name. Amen. Praise God. Could you give me the... Get this man a seat. He's making the place look untidy. Yeah, it's okay. You know I'm only teasing. Right, Maggie? You'll get a cup from Paul as you come in with the... Uh... Thank you. With the bread and the cup. When I first went to church, I didn't know a lot about church etiquette. I didn't know about communion. I didn't know much about anything. But you know, over the years I've learned. And the purpose of us breaking bread together and drinking of the cup, this piece of bread is symbolic. It's not Christ's body, but it's symbolic of the sacrifice that Jesus did for you and for me. He gave his life on a cross, it says in his word, for God so loved the world, that you and me, every one of us in here today, he loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son, that if we believe in him, we shall not perish, but have everlasting life in the Lord. You know, Sammy lost his sister just last week, and laid her to rest. But the wonderful thing about it is that his sister knew Jesus. So we do not suffer in these occasions like those who have no hope. Because we have the hope in the resurrection. And we have our hope in Jesus. So as you partake, this table that's up there, normally we had it here, but with the COVID it's changed. But it's still, we can remember the sacrifice. The greatest sacrifice that was ever made. The greatest love story that was ever told of a man who was willing to give his life to be beaten, to be bruised, to be humiliated, and all the things he had to go through because he loved you and me so much. Everyone, nobody missing. Every one of us, he loved us so much. 
And this little piece of bread is symbolic of that sacrifice, of his body that was broken. And as we break bread together as a family, as a church, we can close our eyes and just thank God for what he's done in our hearts and in our lives. So Father, we're grateful for everyone that's gathered here today. And as we accepted you into our hearts and lives, we, we remember that sacrifice. We remember that love that you have for us. And we ask you to bless each and every one like only you can in Jesus' name. And after he'd given thanks, he took the cup. And inside the cup is little red juice. And this is symbolic as well of his blood that was shed for us. He shed his blood to cover all our sins. He, when he see the blood of his crucified son, he no, no more sees what we've done. He only sees the blood. And we're thankful for that, for forgiveness of sins this morning. And as we partake of the cup, we remember that his blood that was shed for us in Jesus' name. We've got a little special for you today. Her name is Sorel. And her mother is a single mother, loves her daughter. And you know what she does? She brings her, to, her little daughter to church to know the things of God. And Sorel's going to bless you this morning. Can you pull her forward a little bit, John, maybe perhaps? So they can see her. Can you see her? Forward a little bit. Forward a little bit, Sorel. Don't be shy. That's a good one. Uncle Ben will help you. Hallelujah. Just close your eyes and allow her, the words of the song to bless you this morning. Bless you, Sorel. Give it all you've got, sweetheart.
out of the mouths of babes. Uh, eight years. Next month. Next month. Eight years old. Praise God. One thing we love to do in this church is to encourage our children. Every one of them. And every one of you that support and do all what you do, you're helping to bring these kids on in the Lord. Praise God. Bishop, I don't think you'll beat that song. I don't think you can do any better. Hallelujah. Just come on up and get ready. And I would just ask the mothers at this time, if you just stand, all you mothers, I'm just going to pray with you right now where you are. Every single one of you. All the mothers just stand, please. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Father, I'm just so grateful for each and every one of these beautiful ladies. Lord, for the spirit they have, for all that they've done for their children and the bringing them up and for their grandchildren. Lord, I pray right now, Lord, as they look to you to lead and guide them and, and to direct their paths. And for them not to lean on their own understanding, Lord, but to lean on you. I ask a blessing upon each and every one that only you can give. A blessing of encouragement, Lord. A blessing of thankfulness that we have for each and every one. And we pray, Lord, that you'll be with them, that you'll stay with them, that they'll continue to look to you in every area of their life. Father, bless the mothers today. And while we're at it, bless the fathers too, Lord Jesus. Bless each and every one in this place this morning that will not leave this place the same way as we came, but wonderfully changed in your precious name. Let your love abound in this place. Let your Holy Spirit abound in this place. And as the young folks are going through the waters of baptism, let them come out through those waters, Lord, like, like uh, with a new feeling, a new experience as they decide to make a further walk with you. Jesus, just bless them abundantly, above and beyond whatever we could ask or think. In your precious name. And we all said, Amen. Amen. God bless you, moms. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers this morning once again, amen. I'm really singing, I lost my couple of songs, new ones, so I'm singing this one for Pastor Day, amen. Uh -oh.
for you this morning on Mother's Day. Amen. I was honored to be here this morning and always honored to share a word here. You know, um, there's so many different characters in the Bible and people in the Bible we could refer to this morning, but uh, yet you have to think of uh, Moses' mother. Amen. A woman, uh, talk about a mother's heart in the book of Exodus, in the second chapter, I believe it's around verse 3, it speaks about uh, Moses' mother has got a, a, a son born, and we know the story that Pharaoh had commanded all, all the young men, would, boys, when they were born, would be destroyed because they were fearful of the Messiah coming in, fearful of him, another king coming. And so they they put an ordinance out that all the young males would be destroyed. And Moses' mother said when she found him was such a fair child and she took him as a baby when he was a few months old and she made a little ark. It doesn't say the father done that. That's unusual. But it said that the mother made an ark and she pitched it with tar and uh, I guess sticks, whatever, and got to put together a little lid on it. And she had her daughter take Moses and put him in that ark and, and take him out to the river bank on the Nile when uh, Pharaoh's daughter was getting ready to bathe. And evidently she put a lot of thought into this. You can see a mother's heart here yearning. It would be a hard thing to give up your child. Yes. Amen? But she w was doing it for the safety of the child believing and hoping and praying that somehow that this effort would be wouldn't be fruitless but somehow this child would live and so she had her take her out we know the story she she had that little ark that little like a boat go out and the, the daughter put it right in the right spot where pharaoh's daughter was coming down and then she said watch and see what happens and she watched and sure enough pharaoh's daughter when she saw, saw it she said to her handmaiden, she said, go see what that, what that is. And they went and brought the ark, and here the child was there. And she said, that's one of the Hebrew children. And she desired it. And she had instructed the young daughter, smart enough, to say, shall I go fetch uh, a, a, a maiden of someone to nurse it for you? And she said, yes. And she ran back and got her mother. And her mother came, and her mother... And the, Pharaoh's daughter told her, she said, wean this child for me. And after he's weaned, then bring him back that I might raise him. And you know that woman, Pharaoh, uh, Moses' mother, cultured and, and nursed and explained, uh, just like Pastor Dave was saying, to raise up a child and bring him in the house. And she explained who, who your people are, even at a young age. And, and don't forget, and w would take care of from time to time. And a mother's heart will do that. 
She'll, she'll go out of her way to do it, all she can do to see that that child's taken care of. Amen? And that child, we don't have the, the story of the two women that, that when the wisdom of Solomon was known for being so wise, it was for the fact that the Bible said there was a great famine was when King Solomon was king. And it's a fact in the, in the Bible, it's a true story. It said that two women were together and they both had a child at the same time. They had no husbands. And the one in the middle of the night rolled over on her child, the Bible says, and the child died. So she rose up early in the morning and she switched children. She took the dead child, her child, she put in the bed with the one woman and took that child and put it in her bed. And when they woke up in the woman, in the morning, the one woman went to feed her child and she realized that it wasn't her child. And she said, this, you got the wrong child, this is my child. And she said, no, that's my child, this is my child. And they had, of course, a great argument. You know, a mother would know her own child. And so they went to King Solomon and the, and the woman explained to her, she said, in the middle of the night, we both had children at the same time, and in the middle of the night, uh, she, she rolled over and killed her child. Now, this is my child. And so she's trying to steal my child. And, of course, the king didn't know whose child was what. So he said, well, I'll tell you what to do. He said, bring me a sword. And they brought a sword, and he said, well, divide the child in two. And you can have half, and you can have half. And the mother, of course, said, no, don't do that. Don't do that. Let her have the child. And she said, no, divide it in half. And he gave it to the mother, and he said, this is the mother's child. Because only a mother would want no harm whatsoever. They would give their child up before they would see harm come to it. Amen. That's a mother's heart. And, you know, I'd like to read something here. I'm going to show you my age this morning. There used to be a... Years ago in the paper, a woman by the, I guess it was her name, it was writing her, uh, Emma Bombach was her name. And she wrote short things, columns in the newspaper, uh, funny things, different things. And I was reading the other day, and I happened to come across, she, she wrote, she read this somewhere, uh, it was from Illinois, and she wrote it, it said someone wrote it from Illinois. And she put it in her column. And it said, Mother's Day is a tradition, is a traditionally the day when children give something back to their mothers for all the spit they produce to wash their dirty faces, <laughs> all the old gum they had in their hands, all the noses they wiped and all the bloody no knees they made well with their kisses. This is the mothers, this is the day mothers are rewarded for washing sheets in the middle of the night, for driving kids to school when they miss their bus, for enduring all the football and soccer games and baseball in the rain. It's a day of appreciation for making your children finish something they said they couldn't do. Not believing them when they said, I hate you, and sharing their good times in their band. They wrote, what are mothers? Well, mothers are teachers. Mothers are disciplinar disciplinarians. Mothers are cleaning ladies. Some mothers are gardeners, mowers of lawns. Mothers are nurses and doctors, psychiatrists, counselors, chauffeurs, and coaches. Mothers are developers of personalities, molders of, of vocabularies, shapers of attitudes. Mothers are soft voices saying, I love you. Mothers are linked to God, a child's first impression of God's love. Mothers are the things and much, much more. You see, he said, one of my favorite uh, columns, it, it says, God was creating mothers. And she said, on the day God created mothers, he had already worked long overtime. And an angel said to him, Lord, you sure are spending a lot of time on this one. 
And the Lord turned to the angel and said, have you read the specs on this model? She's supposed to be completely washable, but not plastic. She has to have 180 moving parts, all of them replaceable. She is to have a kiss that will wipe, that will heal everything from broken legs to broken hearts. She is to be able to function on black coffee and leftovers. And she's supposed to have six pair of hands. The angel said six pair of hands. That's impossible. It's not six pair of hands that bothers me, said the Lord. It's a three pair of eyes. <laughs> she is supposed to have a pair of eyes to see through closed doors so that whatever she said, when are you doing there, she already knows what they're doing there. She has another pair in the back of her head to see all the things she's not supposed to see, but sees them. She has one pair right in the front that can look a child who goofed and communicate love and understanding without saying a word. That's too much, said the angel. You can't put all that into one model. Why don't you rest for a while and resume your creating tomorrow? No, I can't do that, said the Lord. I'm cl I'm close to creating this one very much like myself. I've already come up with a model who can heal herself when she's sick, can feed a family of six on one pound of hamburger, who can persuade a nine-year-old to take a shower. Then the angel looked at the model of motherhood a little more closely. And he said, she's too soft. Oh, but she's tough, said the Lord. You'd be surprised how much this mother can do. Can she think, asked the angel. Not only she can think, said the Lord, but she can reason and compromise and persuade. Then the angel reached over and touched her cheek. This one has a leak, she said. I told you that you put too much in this model. The Lord said, that's not a leak, it's a tear. What is a tear for her? Well, it's for joy, sadness, sorrow, disappointment, and for pride. He says, you're a genius, said the angel to the Lord. Oh, but I didn't put the tear there. Amen. Mothers do so much in raising children. Amen. And that's why on Mother's Day we're so grateful and so thankful for what the mothers do. In 2 Samuel 24th chapter, there's a story in the 10th verse here. King, uh, King Saul had been killed. King Saul and all his sons had been hung. Uh, the enemy took them and they hung them. And a concubine that he had named Rizba had two sons for King Saul. And it says here, when they were hung up, in verse 9 it says, He delivered them to the hands of the Gibeons, and they hanged them in the hill before the Lord. And they fell all seven together and were put to death in the days of harvest, in the first days, in the beginning of the barley harvest. Verse 10 says, And Rizba, the daughter of Ah, took sackcloth and spread it for her upon the rock from the beginning of harvest until the water dropped from him. Uh, dropped from out of the heaven and suffered neither the birds of the air nor to rest on them by day nor the beasts of the field by night. And it was told David, King David, who it was, who Rizba, the daughter of Ahab, the concubine of Saul, had done. Here's just, you know, this mother. And I, I don't know, but I mean, I've studied different commentaries, when, and especially after I've read this, I've looked at different commentaries, and they claim that was approximately about six months. I don't know for sure that's how long it was. But this woman, when her two sons were hung up, she went there where they were at and spread this sackcloth, like a tent. And she stayed there, and I, when I read deeper into it, she had servants with her, women that was with her, and they would shoo the birds away from coming and picking at the body. Day in and day out. Guarded from wild beasts at night. Day in and day out. For a period of approximately six months between the harvest and the rain. And I don't know the accurate time on it, but only can you imagine only a mother, I would believe, would go out and 
take care of their, their child that's already been dead and, and watch so carefully she didn't want nothing to happen to that body. And it was such a powerful thing that it got the attention of the king. And you know, many mothers in here today have gotten attention of the king, the king of kings, amen? Many a mother in here today, what you went through and the times you spent and the nights and the days that maybe nobody knows about, amen? If you spent that time and that effort. You know, my oldest daughter had uh, a, a child. She had one boy. She had a hard time. She couldn't have children for a good while. She had a child. She had a son. And I've shared before, she wanted more children, of course. And she went to the doctor and whatever. And she got expecting. And they told her she was having triplets. But two weeks later, she found out it was actually quadruplets because the one ended up being identical twin boys. And this was almost 20 years ago. And it wasn't as up to date 20 years ago. Thank God today they can do more for children than they could 20 years ago. And when she had these children, she had them too early. And we was told, uh, basically, none of them really stood a chance of living. Well, they told us that um, the youngest boy would be born blind and the only one that had a, a decent chance was the girl. It was three boys and a girl. And the uh, twin boys had no chance. But when they were born, 10 days after they were born, the oldest twin boy died. And uh, they said, well, the rest won't make it at all. They had a 15% chance that they, that they would even see and they but ended up being that the second twin boy next to the oldest, they all was in intensive care on life support for probably about three or four months. But the oldest boy was almost a year and a half on life support in a separate hospital for children. And the, the other kids was home. She had children at home and her husband at home. And we didn't know until a good few years later, I didn't know until recently, and it's been almost 20 years. But my daughter would take care of the house, take care of the children, take care of her husband, feed everybody supper, clean up, put the babies to bed, and do all that. And then when everybody was in bed, and her husband was in bed, and he was asleep, she would get up, and she'd get in the car, and she'd drive all the way up to the hospital. And then she would crawl in bed with her other baby. And she would lay there till almost early, early in the morning. And then she'd get up and come home. And they didn't even know she was gone. And she'd done that until the baby died. He died at almost a year, a year and a half old. But only a mother would get up and, and do that faithfully. Amen. And didn't make a scene about it, didn't tell nobody she was doing it, nobody even knew she was doing it. But she did it faithfully. Amen. And that's the kind of love. And that's why today we honor mothers. Amen. Go out of their way. Only a mother would go out of their way and do something. I believe and do something like that. Maybe a father would, but I mean, a father isn't taking care of the other kids and taking care of the house and taking care of all these things. But she did, and, and, and this is the heart of mothers. That Rizba that, that even after the children was dead, stayed there and, and tried to keep the fowls of the air off it and everybody off of it, amen? Moses' his mother making the ark. The Bible tells us in the book of Matthew in the 21st chapter about Zeb Zebedee, uh, uh wife, you know, she... She, she, somebody, she took care of her, her two sons came and they asked her and you know I could see this they asked their mother Zebedee and they said to her go to Jesus they was with Jesus they was his disciples and they said go to Jesus James and John and ask him can we sit on his right hand and on his left hand in the kingdom of God and they knew the mother would do it the father probably wouldn't do it at all would say you know 
don't bother me. That. You know, you're, you don't even know what you're asking. But the mother, because the boys came to her and said, Mom, we want you to do this for us. We know you'll do it. And as the Bible says, she went to Jesus and asked him. She said, I have a, a request. And he said, what is it you have? He said, she said, I want my two sons, one to sit on your right hand and one to sit on your left hand when you get to the kingdom of God. And he said, you don't know what you're asking. Are they able to drink of the cup that I drink of? Amen. But you know, a mother would do what their, their sons is come and they put her in the spot and said, will you do it? And she won't say no. She'll say, well, all my boys, if it's really what you want, I'll go. Maybe your dad won't go, but I'll go for you. And she went and she asked Jesus. But you know, mothers are like that. I've seen, you know, I've only got two girls, but I've seen Gloria go and do things that, you know, the boys will ask her to do this or ask her to do that. And she would go out of her way and make an effort. And I imagine probably most mothers in here have done the same thing at one time or another. You know, the mothers get up like just like that little saying we're saying. They get up in the middle of the night. You know, I, I when we had Billy, my child, the first child we had was Billy. And he was the worst child I think anybody ever had. Amen. <laughs> He cried till he was two years old. And one night he cried, one time he cried 12 hours straight. It's the truth. I got home and, and he started crying about eight o'clock at night. And he cried all night. And when I left to go to work in the morning, eight o'clock, he just passed out and he stopped crying. And she said, I was up with him for she said, you'll have to take turns. She was young. You have to, I, can't, I can't stay up no longer. You've got to take turns. And I took turns. I stayed up with them about 30 minutes. And I said, now it's your turn again. And she took her turn. And I, I slept. I said, you know, I ain't got to work. I got to do this. Her. She had to do everything, too. She had to keep the house clean and take care of it. But she didn't realize how much harder it was for me to get and go to work. And you realize over the years, you know, when they're running fevers and they're doing things. And, and I was thinking about when I was reading that little story of uh, this different times where I've been here where Gloria's endured baseball games. It gets hot here in the summer. Amen. Baseball games when it's roasting hot and she'd be sitting there with them and running and doing and schedules and, you know, constantly going. If mothers do endure, fathers do a lot too. Come on. But the mothers do an awful lot. I think they do a lot more. And I thank God for the mothers. I thank God for everybody here. I'm just going to have a short. I know we got a lot to do today. We got 10 different people who are going to be baptizing, and people's got plans for Mother's Day. And I'm just going to end it there, and I'm going to say, God bless the mothers. God bless the women in the Bible that was godly mothers as well. Amen. And we just appreciate it. getting ready. Oops. This thing's drunk. I'll just tell you a little story. We had a one of our child's children cried a lot too. And I remember as if it was this. So this daughter of mine, it's Bonnie, and she would cry a lot too. And one day Maggie got so frustrated with her. It says, if you cry again, I'm going to give you the biggest whooping that you've ever had. <laughs> Talking about a mother's love and how gentle they are. <laughs> Nurturing. I mean, I couldn't have done anything like that to my daughter. Anyway, as she was going to give her a whooping, she realized that she'd gotten a new outfit. And the pin in the outfit had sprung loose. It was poking into little Bonnie as a little child. So that's why she was crying because she was getting popped. So Bonnie, you were a really good baby. Oh, uh, yeah? you're, you're making up for it now. But we had one too, Bishop. See there? Praise God. So what's going to happen now, we're going to, guys, I've got to sing a song for you very quickly. The kids are going to go get ready to be baptized. It's downstairs in the blue room. And if you've never been to one of our baptismal services, John sings his favorite song. And uh, he'll lead us in singing that down there. And if you mothers get your children ready and the young people get ready, 
and we'll have a wonderful baptismal service together. So thank you for being with us this morning. God bless you. And we'll hope to see you downstairs. And this is a super day, eh? What a wonderful day. And all you mothers are here to celebrate with us. And these kids have they've read the scriptures with their parents. And they all understand what they're doing. And uh, I know that we've got... I'm just wondering who to go first. Who's going first? Who's number one? Bishop, you get your shoes off. Okay. And Pastor Zach, where are you? You go in. Take your shoes off as well. Praise God. I promise I have my socks Are you excited? Amen. Can you parents see in the back all right? Can you see it? We'll also, Ben is recording it. And we'll put it up for you and we'll get you a recording, okay, if you need it. You all right, Mark? Can you see there? Good. Loretta there? Yep. All right. Donnie, are you ready? Patsy? Yay! Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Who's going to be first? LT. LT, you want to be first? This is a this is a young man. Uh, his name is LT, and his family come to the church with him, and uh, we just love him. He's a lovely boy. How about LT? Stand up here, LT, and I'll get you in the mic. You want to give a little testimony, LT, while you're getting baptized? I'm getting baptized because. I want the Lord to forgive me of my sins. Amen. Give me a uh, Down you go with Pastor Zach into the water. Take him forward. Bishop, if you want to come in. Look at this fine figure of a man getting in here. <laughs> You'll see the, the water rise as he gets in. <laughs> I don't want you leaving that diamond in the tank because I'm going dump diamond hunting after us. <laughs> You're watching. Yeah. It's, uh, it's waterproof, I hope. <laughs> it's in a good home. Praise the Lord. All right. Give him your full name, LT. LT Hughes. LT Hughes. Okay. Right, Bishop? You can do the first one. LT Hughes, on your profession of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, in the Holy Spirit. I follow Jesus anywhere, everywhere. I will follow on. Follow, follow. I will follow Jesus everywhere. Right. Well done, LT. LT Hughes. Who's next? Isabella. Isabella Crudgenton. Here she comes. This is my niece. And also uh, comes to church every Sunday and loves the Lord with all her heart. Up there, Isabella. And you want to take your watch off, dear? Okay. Right. Just tell them why you want to get baptized. Take a I'm going to follow Jesus in the waters of baptism. Amen. Make the horse hear you. Make the horse hear you. I'm going to follow Jesus through the waters of baptism. Amen. Amen. Bless her. Give her a hand. Help her in, Bishop. That's it. This is Isabella. Crudgeting. Give them your full name, Isabella. Isabella Ann What? Isabella Ann Crudgeton. Jack. Zach. Isabella Ann Crudgeton. Isabella Ann Crudgeton, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Follow, follow, I will follow Jesus. Anywhere, everywhere, I will follow on. Follow, follow, I will follow Jesus. Everywhere he leads me, I will follow on. Well done, Isabella. Who's next? Come on, Liam. This is Liam Cameron Newlands. How do I know his name? Because he's my grandson. 
And uh, we have just a short word. Tell them why you want to get baptized, buddy. I want to follow Jesus for the rest of my life. Amen. Amen. Bless your son. And his name is Liam Cameron Newlands. Hallelujah. Whoever wants to take it. Praise God. Liam Cameron Newland. Confession of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. We now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Mother or whoever's taking him out of the water, be here because if I touch him, I don't want to get electrocuted. <laughs> All right, so you help him. All right, who's next? Oh, Johnny. Huh? Johnny. Oh, Johnny. This is our Johnny Buckland. All the way from Macon. And it wasn't too long ago that this young man put up his hand and I wasn't sure. I thought he was saved, but he wanted to make sure. sure. This is Johnny Buckland. And you give us your full name, Johnny, and tell us why you, and if your dad's going to hand you the towel, that'll be great. Hey, Johnny. I want son. I want son. <laughs> uh, William John Buckland. And you want to? Clean off the plate and start fresh. Yeah. yeah. Woo! William John Buckland. <laughs> Hallelujah. Bless you. He's a fine figure of a man. Here he goes then. How do I know his name? He's my grandson. Yay! Johnny, the profession of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, William John Buckland, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Here is water, what hand of it? Mark William. Are you coming, Mark William? Come on, son. This is Mark William Buckland. He's also from Macon. And his family travel all the way from Macon every Sunday. I would take them off, son. That's a boy, right now. He's a lovely young man. Uh, Mark William Buckland, and I want to get baptized because I want to be a missionary and give my life to God. Amen. Give him a big hand now. Mark William Buckland. Amen. Bishop. You know his name. My grandson. Uh, sure. <laughs> Mark William Buckland, on your profession of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. We baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Follow, follow, I will follow Jesus anywhere, everywhere. I will follow on. Follow, follow, I will follow Jesus everywhere he leads me. I will follow. Woo. And the next one is. Who's next? Billy. Billy Buckland. Oh, Billy. William, what's his name? <laughs> oh, he's named after somebody special, is he? <laughs> this is Billy Mackenzie Buckland, all the way from Macon, Georgia. And he comes every week, and we're just thrilled to have him in our church. He's a lovely boy, all right? I want to be baptized. Amen. Praise the Lord. Want to follow the Lord? Yes, sir. You love Jesus? Yes, sir. Amen. Give him a big hand. Yeah. Hallelujah. Bless you. Time I see him lost for words. <laughs> <laughs> it happens to us all. Billy Mackenzie Buckland. Of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, 
we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. is a young lady that comes all the way from Macon, Georgia, married a fantastic young man named Michael Buckland. Uh, he's all right. He's all right. <laughs> Savannah, don't say no more bad about him. Just say good. Now, tell us your full name and why you want to get baptized. My name is Savannah Scarlett Buckland, and I want my heart clean. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Bless you. Savannah Scarlett Buckland. Amen. Bless you. We love you, Savannah. You're a blessing to us. Amen. My granddaughter as well. Amen. Amen. Savannah, Scarlett Buckland, out of your profession of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Follow, follow, I will follow Jesus. Everywhere, everywhere, I will follow all. plenty of water in the tank. Who would be nice? His name is Cade Gordon Cole. And how do I know his name? It's my grandson. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on then, Cade. Up you come, son. Right. Take your time. Um, I would be baptized because I've sinned too much. <laughs> He's been taken after his father. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's yours, sir. Well, do you all in gray remember this? Until I'm all in gray, I'll tell you that Christ was crucified for the forgiveness of your sins. Cade Gordon Cole, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Follow, follow, I will follow Jesus. Anywhere, everywhere, I will follow on. Loretta, you want to have another bit? <laughs> just checking, just checking. Is there any more? Praise God. This is water. What hinders you? If you want to get baptized, we'll give you fresh clothes. We've got plenty of towels. Got them from Costco. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's have just a word of prayer. Father, we're just so grateful today for this wonderful celebration of seeing all these young lives being brought and taught to follow you. And Lord, as they've followed you through the waters of baptism, Lord, I just pray that your, your blessing will be upon them, that you'll give them the desires of their heart. And Lord, that you'll be with them, you'll protect them, you'll lead them, and you'll guide them, and you'll direct their paths. Lord, we just love each and every one, and they're so, so special. Bring them up to be young men and women that love you, Lord, and encourage others to come to know you. We thank you for their parents. We especially thank you today for the mothers and the mother's love, Lord, that have, have, have been just imparted in each and every one. And we're thankful for them. We're thankful for everyone that's gathered here today. And we just ask you, Lord, just to bless them in a mighty way. Lord, let your love flow. Let your spirit flow. Let your anointed flow. Give us journey of mercies in the way home, Lord Jesus. Keep your hand upon us. In Jesus' name, have we all said? Amen. Amen. Love you all. We'll do it one more time, John, in case you don't know the words. Follow, follow, I will follow Jesus. Anywhere, 